now a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, and Senator, of course, uh, is on the side of uh, the civil libertarians that Gene was just talking about. Uh, so, uh, Senator, uh, did you speak with the president? Uh, were you able to influence him to switch his position from last night? You know, I have spoken with the president, but I don't think it's necessary that you understand this as switching his position. He still advocates, or the administration says they advocate for reauthorization. So do I, actually. I want reauthorization with reform, so I don't think they're mutually exclusive. This program allows us to spy on foreigners in foreign lands with a less than constitutional standard, or really with no constitutional standard. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is that millions of Americans are collected into this data system, mm. and that maybe rogue people at the FBI or a Justice Department could look at this database without a judge's warrant. So we want a judge's warrant. So I don't think they're mutually exclusive. You can be for the program and for the program with reforms. Right. And the way I understand the president's position is that he wants some of the reforms, that he thinks that we ought to have a warrant to look at this, and that there's a possibility that people with bias in the intelligence community could use that bias to actually abuse the system. This is an enormous power. You have to realize we have the ability to soak up every phone call in Italy in one month, and apparently we did. So we have the ability to soak up most of the phone calls and conversations in the whole world. That power is so enormous that it needs to be limited and watched carefully, and I think a judge should be looking at this before you try to look at an American's information. Right, so, um, so a follow-up on my last question then is, you spoke with the president. Did you speak to the president about this? Did you encourage him to uh, change his position, or if not change his position, at least take a position <laughs> inconsistent with what the White House officially released last night. Actually, actually sort of the opposite. Uh, our, in our discussion, he was encouraging me that this is his position, that he agrees with me on the position. But I don't think, I think that we're getting it wrong if you think they're mutually exclusive, because I know you're always looking for inconsistencies, but you can be for reauthorization, with the administration is for, right. with reform. So my bill and the Justin Amash amendment that they're going to vote on today, reauthorization authorizes the program, but says you have to get a warrant, and it also says that you cannot um, use that the information from this uh, huge database that's been collected without constitutional protection. You can't use it for domestic so, crime. You can only use it for terrorism, so, so, national security, So, Rand, uh, drill, drill down for, for those of us, uh, people watching, that, may, that obviously haven't studied this as closely as you. So you want to keep the FISA system in place. You want to keep the FISA courts in place. You have no problem with us doing this abroad. Uh, I, 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 would, I would guess that you also would have no problem with this happening at home domestically when, when our, our intelligent agencies have to look for terrorists or homegrown terrorists. You are just saying, let me finish, because I think you may agree with me. You, though, just are, you're fine with that. You just want an extra layer of protection before that power is granted. Is that correct? At, ho at, at home, there has to be the D Constitution. Abroad, there doesn't. That's a simple way to put it. So if you have somebody, even uh, a person who mows down pedestrians in New York that we all want to punish, we use the Constitution here. They get a jury. They get a lawyer. I'm for having the Constitution work in our country, it doesn't necessarily have to work, but all the information we gather through FISA on foreigners in foreign countries, it captures Americans' data too, many accidentally or right. incidentally who are completely innocent. If I have made a phone call, if any of you have made a phone call, it could have been caught up. Think of this, if a journalist sends an email and puts in the words Baghdadi, the leader right. of ISIS, yeah. that may be captured because now he is a target right. and you've sent an so, email so, to one so, of your so reporters we, overseas. We, we understand, so again, so to strip it down, so let's say this happens incidentally. I, I don't know if this is what actually happened with, with uh, the general, General Flynn, but let's say they pick it up incidentally. So my question is, when is it possible, this is the best way to ask it, I guess, when is it possible for law enforcement to use incidentally picked up information which proves a crime or a terror attack is going to be committed by an American. There are currently only internal controls over who can search the database. They say they're not doing it very often, but here's the point. You should ask a judge. The same way when we say, well, police brutality could occur, one of the ways we check police brutality, even though we think most would policemen it, are good, a, would it be is a they FISA have to call judge? a judge. Right. Would it be a you FISA to, judge? It, it's, that's, uh, it, you would have to have a judicial warrant, and in this case, yes, it probably still would be a FISA so judge. So it would still be would, secret? 
Like you, you're not saying let's go to the the the, the you know the local federal judge. Right. There but, still would be a okay. judge overseeing it. It would be a FISA judge. But here's the, the rub about this. You need checks and balances. As Madison said, men are not angels. And we found out recently there were people in the FBI plotting to bring the president down. There are people in the Department of Justice working with opposition who, research. Who was to bring plotting the with the FBI down. to bring the president down? Strzok, his girlfriend, perhaps someone named Andy, talking about we need an insurance policy to bring the president down to prevent his election. And, that was and, happening and on that, company that's time actually, on company that, phones. That, that was that was that was where a couple people talking. And are you are you suggesting yeah. there's an FBI <laughs> well, conspiracy? I mean, would you well, like no. all of would you like uh, all of your texts when you're blowing uh, off steam about politics? Would you like them produced a little? Because I know I certainly wouldn't. Yeah, but when you're talking on an FBI phone and you are at work conspiring with other workers to bring the president down, that is a real problem. But it's evidence that there's bias, and bias can occur on either side. We now have evidence that at least two, maybe three high-ranking FBI agents had enormous bias against the president. Each one of them could potentially have been searching the database just looking for stuff. Well, Rand, the other problem I, I, mean, is, I, I understand that, but you, you would admit that there were a lot of FBI agents that had tremendous bias against Barack Obama. In fact, when people like me, and I would guess you, were angry exactly. that Barack Obama was saying that Hillary Clinton but, didn't, didn't violate any national right. security standards, the right. FBI, he had agents really bias angry can, and leaking things against him. But bias can occur on either side. Men are not angels, as Madison said. That's why we need more oversight. All all of the arguments we're making, they could be Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, and that's why this is a bipartisan coalition. When you look in the House, it's half Republicans, half Democrats, they're going to be for this reform amendment. Right. All it says is that we are worried that men and women are human, could be biased, and that this enormous power to soak up all of our phone calls needs to be overseen by a Got judge. It. You should not right. have people just searching the database without okay. any kind of oversight. So, so we, we, we're gonna, we got a few people here that want to jump in, Mike. Okay, Senator, you've indicated you have an apprehension about, in your words, rogue FBI agents in the Department of Justice. But you just said that two FBI agents were conspiring to bring down a presidency. Can you back that up? How are they conspiring? Well, in their conversations that we've seen, the, the little bit that we've seen... You've seen text they messages, talk about, correct? They talk about... Let me finish. They talk about a discussion in Andy's office where they're pretty much assured by that discussion the president won't win, and then they're saying, but we need an insurance policy. So, yeah, that sort of gives an indication to a lot of us that three people, high-ranking people, were talking about how they can prevent Trump from becoming president. They're talking about it at work. Sounds to me, at the very least, to be inappropriate, but I think you could also use the word conspiring to prevent someone from winning an election. Well, I don't think inappropriate is a synonym for conspiring, but apparently you do. Uh, Senator, it's Nick Confessori. I want to ask you, so you've said in private conversations with the president, he's with your position on modifying uh, the FISA bill. Uh, and I think that uh, FISA needs to be reformed, but like I say, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Right, I think so the president has said he's with you. With reform. So the president said he's with you. My question is, how come his staff is out there pushing for a straight repeal if the president wants some changes? I think what you're seeing is, is that people want reauthorization. They're worried about the potential good of this program spying on foreigners and foreign lands, but I think they're not mutually exclusive. I think you can be for reauthorization and for reform, and I think the president's tweet speaks for itself. He is concerned that the intelligence community does not have enough oversight, and I think we need more oversight, not less, and I, I think those positions are pretty clear, and you can have both of those positions. Senator, this is Gene Robinson. I would agree with you on the need for reform, and I, I think we, I'd probably vote for your amendment if I could. Could, but I want to take you back to what Mike Barnacle said, this, this, this question of, F, of the FBI conspiring to bring down President Trump. Conspiracy requires an overt act, I think. Do you have any evidence that these FBI agents did anything uh, to adversely uh, affect President Trump's chances of winning the election? I think all we have is a snippet of their conversation. So, yeah, if they want to release the transcript of what they were discussing with Andy in the office, uh, you know, perhaps Andy McKay, perhaps the second in charge of the FBI, it is very worrisome that they're saying they were talking about trying to prevent Trump from being president, but maybe it's going to be okay, maybe we'll be successful, but we need to have an insurance policy. That sounds very worrisome to the American people that high-ranking FBI agents were actually conspiring to try to prevent hey. Trump, Donald Trump from becoming president. Well, okay. We don't know if they were doing that. That's well, we don't know. Um, one, fi one final question, uh, Senator. Um, just generally on the question of Bob Mueller. Um, okay. it, obviously, the president yesterday said he wanted Republicans to step up and, and take control of the investigation. 
Uh, Paul Ryan and others have said that they believe that uh, that Robert Mueller should be allowed to continue his investigation through the end. Would, do, do you agree with those Republicans or do you think the investigation should be stopped? Well, here's the question. I think his instructions are to look for Russian influence in the campaign. We now have evidence that Russian agents were paid for by a campaign. We have evidence that Christopher Steele paid Russian agents and he was paid for by Hillary Clinton. So the only direct linkage we have to Russians so far in the evidence is actually the Hillary Clinton campaign through Christopher Steele to Russian agents that were paid for this dossier. So I don't know if you want Mueller to continue along that vein and look down both avenues equally into both campaigns for collusion. If we want to do that, maybe we could. But I think so far there's no evidence of any collusion with the president. Well, we don't know. There are, there are obviously, his national security advisor and closest confidant. Uh, traveling on the campaign is cooperating with the investigation after pleading guilty right. to federal charges. Same with other other officials. So well, no, I'm I'm fine with everybody being investigated. I, uh, are you fine with everybody being investigated? Are you fine with the investigation continuing? I think the problem we have sometimes with special prosecutors is we go down avenues that uh, can lead down uh, rabbit holes 20 years old. And so I think really what happens with a special prosecutor is you end up uh, convicting people of tax evasion. Now we have Michael Flynn caught up in something that may have been an illegally recorded phone call where people listen to his phone call, release it to the media, which is a felony, and then we try to get him with inconsistencies as to what he said in a private phone call. And so there's a lot of worry that a special prosecutor's mandate is too broad. Right, but really if we right. want to look for collusion, the only evidence we've seen of collusion is that Hillary Clinton well, paid Christopher Steele. That's the only evidence Russian that agents. you know. That, that, that's the only that's evidence so you know. Like, we do know that, that some people have been thrown in jail, and we aren't going to know until the investigation's concluded. So I'll ask again, should Bob Mueller be able to finish that conclusion so we know whether there were, uh, the, the, that investigation so we know whether there's collusion or not? Yeah, but... Yes, but uh, okay. how long? A decade? I mean, we yeah. need to get it done. Listen, There's been a year's worth of investigation. I, I think we should go on too I, long. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I still am a little, uh, a little chapped at Lawrence Walsh's investigation, dropping charges uh, against, uh, I think it was Cap Weinberger, two or three days before the 92 election. So I agree with you. And Democrats certainly would agree that an investigation that started on a land deal shouldn't have ended up. Uh, impeaching the president because of personal relations with somebody else. So we probably all agree on that. All right, Senator, thank you so much. It was uh, very informative and really timely. We'll see what happened. By the way, really quickly, I, they're going to yell at me, but I'm just curious. No, well, yeah, yeah. Is there a chance uh, for this, this amendment to pass? How many, how many people do you have lined up on it? It's very, very close in the House. Right now, we think we have a chance of winning. What we've heard all night long is that leadership on the Republican side and unfortunately on the Democrat side is calling, twisting arms and trying to get people to change their votes because I think we have the votes to win for reform. It would be a great victory for the American people to say, you know what, to look at an American's information, you have to have a warrant, which should be a basic fundamental thing that we all agree right. on. All right, Rand Paul, thank, thank you. you. Rand we Rand really Paul. appreciate your time <clears throat> and your patience with us.